This is a very, very well used, beat up old Dell laptop. Somebody who used to go to Marist College used it in college. This is a Dell something. I don't know if I could open it with one hand. Yeah. It's a Dell Inspiron 5000. This has made a cameo appearance um, in the video I did about umpteen years ago about printing from a computer to a fax machine. And for whatever reason, this machine was able to do that. I've never gotten another one to be able to print to a fax machine. There's something with the built-in modem on this. Uh, you'll notice there's some sort of a repair there. So we'll just go over everything here. Kensington lock port. Your, these are actually card bus, I believe, if I recall. Uh, slots right there, two of them. And what is this mess? Well, well, well. Over here is a vent, and over here is the original power connection. This took one of those old Dell connections that had a three-pin plug in the, you know, at the end of it. And I didn't have that kind, and I wasn't going to spend money to get one. But what I did find was this adapter here, which is actually for if you can just barely see it, a sharp camcorder outputs 19 volts just what this laptop was looking for. And I rigged up a barrel jack which was hot glued on and that's been staying nice and solid for many years. It works great. To wire it um, together I used, I soldered the wires onto the jack and the other end of them are like the little pins that you put onto the little wires that you put on the pins on a desktop motherboard for power and all that great stuff. You have a small fan, RS-232 serial, parallel, S-Video, VGA, docking port, infrared, USB 1.1, PS2 keyboard and or mouse. It's even marked there. Floppy disk. Thank you. And over here, amongst some dust... Headphone, microphone, and line out, it looks like. There is the modem jack. And over here is uh, volume control, actually, up and down. That's really it as far as ports go. And the front is a CD-ROM drive only. And opening it, there is absolutely nothing special here. Your keyboard indicator lights, maybe a power light worn out mouse button maybe you can see the shine on that to show it's used and the shine on all the keys showing it's used this thing is a friggin tank and it just keeps working well until last time i used it pentium 3 600 megahertz i remember nothing else came with windows 98 maybe second edition not really sure 98 second edition there you go microsoft there's your product key i really don't care because that's well deprecated at this point last i used this the hard drive was having conniption fits and i believe it's probably dead so let's get it plugged in and see if it will even power on after all this time it's been an easy three years since i powered this thing power is plugged in we're going to hit the power button oh good we have a flashy green light I think the battery shot on this, although I think it just barely worked when I got it. Uh, this is a CCFL backlit display. has many hours on it. And when I last turned it on, even in that video with the fax machine, you had sort of like a really pinkish glow in the center. So we'll see if it'll even fire now. It powers. Fan runs. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> wow! Look at that! That is really pink. You can see it nice and clear over here, maybe, and the pinkish everywhere else. That will go away as this thing warms up. Oh, oh man! Look, look at the pink. Do you see that? And the fucking floppy drive seek... 
on a laptop. When is the last time you heard that? Oh, I think we got to just power it one more time just for that fun. So let's power it off and back on just, just because that was fucking awesome. I think a microphone is there too. again. So it's got 256 meg of RAM, which is counted. Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... See, it even injects still. You can't get quality like that. All right, let's go in the BIOS here, and I'll set the date and time and everything else. has a 40 gig drive now. You can definitely see that pink spot. Okay, everything's all good. Just set the date and time. It's going to reboot. Let's see if it'll even boot. It may just magically start working again. You can see how that pink is well gone by now. Not all the way, but getting there, certainly. And any day, this should count its memory up and be on its way to booting, or at least attempting to. Nice. Oh, miss that sound. And... Yeah, I think it's pooched. Definitely think it's pooched at this point. Let's stick some diagnostics in here. It seems to be checking performance okay. So that's going to have to run for a little bit. We'll see if it actually moves. It kind of did and now it's sitting and now it moved and we'll just let it do its thing. Yeah, there we go. It's just bad all over the place. So let's see if we could just... I don't know if it has the smart capability. Oh, hello! Smart reports 1646 operations have failed. This is indeed a bad drive. Okay, well, time to power down and pull the drive. So many ports. So many bays. Where is the drive? The drive is here. Gotta take that screw out. This was removable. I guess you could, I guess this is your battery here. Yep, that's definitely a battery. Indeed, that is definitely a battery. Sort of makes up part of the bottom of the laptop. I guess they figured nobody was going to, well, I need two hands for that. I guess they figured nobody was going to uh, run this thing ever without a battery, so... Anyways, let's get the hatch open and take a look. There's the drive. It's a Seagate, and I really have not had many of them fail. 40 gig, as we already know, but we're in luck, because Slantapause, a.k.a. Lexmarks 567, sent a blue package, and in here are three laptop drives, so let's open it and see what they are. Three Shitachi Travel Stars. Wow. At least it's not the uh, IBM Death Star, so that's good. All ID, of course, August 05, September 05, May 06. So August is the oldest. This hat, oh no, look at that. It has the fucking connector. Some laptops used an edge connector to pins. There we go, all set. This might come in handy one day. That's great to have. Excellent. Awesome deal. All right, let's swap the drive. Okay, looks to transplant this, I think. There are just these two screws, so we will see what happens once we remove those. One, two. Oh, this has the same connector. But how do, how does the drive get in there? Does this have to come off? Oh yeah, it does. There's a couple screws here that got to come out. 
So we'll pull that. I guess I need to magnetize my screwdriver. Um, yeah, there is a screw there. Wow, just hiding. Okay. Yep, that comes off, and now there are two more screws. So we'll put those over here. Pull these two. Okay. And should come out. Yeah, it wants to. There we are. The drive is out. And now, this is a slightly different connector, but it needs to be transferred nonetheless. So there's that. We'll mark that drive as bad. And this is not keyed, so it should be able to go any which way. Pins are not terribly mangled at all. The drive has jumpers on it. I don't know if that'll be an issue. And we'll park the drive in there and put this back together. Well, that's going to be a problem, so we'll fix that. Magic. See how easy that was? Okay, it's now time to see if that drive is any good. We'll go in the BIOS first. Uh-oh, I don't like this one. That ain't good. Maybe we got a bad one. Okay, this, this can't be good. I just stabbed the hell out of myself with that screwdriver. That went in bad. I got to take care of that. Oh, crap. I don't know how far that went in, but uh, it didn't just, like, stab and, like, it fell out. I had to actually pull it out and it went plunk. Oh, that can't be good. <laughs> That cannot be good. It's red and swelling there, but uh, I think we'll be able to carry on. I'm going to get the rest of this drive swapped out uh, off camera so I don't hurt myself anymore, I guess. Uh, some little piece of plastic broke off of something, but that's the least of my concerns right now. Let's see if we can get a damn drive that works in here. If there's one thing I don't like, it's changing hard drives. If there's another thing I don't like even more, is doing the same job twice. Actually, changing hard drives on this is pretty easy, but uh, friggin' dangerous. Ain't life a bitch. Look at that. Two hard drive screws. This has a little bracket that had to come off. I could have used that when I fixed the other laptop from Lexmark's 567. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Life's a bitch. Okay, second drive's in. Oh, great, it's starting to bleed again. Wonderful. Let's see what happens this time. Okay, it ignored my key press, but that's all right. We'll just go in the diags and see. All right, let's see what we get. Disk status NA. Uh, select disk. Oh, it sees it! Holy shit, it could have just been that easy the first time! Fucking hell! Alrighty, uh, let's go right down to smart and see how bad the drive is.
So that looks good. We'll go and do the internal cache test quick and maybe a seek test, check the performance and uh, the rest of the system as far as I know worked. Um, I don't know if I should actually waste the time doing diagnostics on it. It's really just kind of spinning your wheels in the mud. You know, we'll do the performance test now. And there we go. About 27 megabytes a second or so, 16.58 millisecond average seek. There's the mechanic stress test, but that's just going to take forever. Uh, I guess that's all good. Nothing really more to do. Um, I guess off camera I'll just run the rest of the diagnostics. See how long the memory takes, because I know that'll take a while. But other than that, uh, there we go. All right, I'll come back later. As expected, everything passed. So now we're going to go ahead and install Windows XP. Because Windows 7 is not going to run on here. So we'll go ahead with that in the next part. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.